Hello YouTube, it is Everything Epan here back with another video and today we are doing a video tutorial on how to install Windows XP Professional in Virtual PC. Now Virtual PC is only available for Windows 7 and below. It's not available for Windows 8 or 10, so this is mainly for Windows 7 users that like to use Virtual PC for any reason. Um, so there will be a link in the description to download Virtual PC. There might be a way, I haven't looked up really, uh, if there's a way to get it on Windows 10. Um, I haven't seen a way, but uh, without further ado, we're just going to go ahead and get right into the tutorial. So like I said, the link for Virtual PC will be in the description along with WinRAR as well as the Windows XP ISO. So we're going to go ahead, I'm going to go ahead and open up the Virtual PC console here and it's gonna be blank. And we're gonna make a new virtual machine by clicking new. It's gonna come up with a wizard and we're just gonna click next on the intro screen. And we're gonna create a new virtual machine here and then we're gonna click next. And now it's gonna to ask to name our virtual machine. And we're just gonna call it Windows XP Professional. You can name it whatever you'd like. And we're gonna click next. And it's automatically gonna have Windows XP as the operating system. And you see there's a list here. It does not go above Windows Vista because of course Windows 7 is the host operating system that this is meant for. So we're gonna leave it at the default of Windows XP and click next. And we're gonna go ahead and adjust the RAM. Um, you can leave it at 128, but I kind of recommend bumping it up a little bit uh, if you can to either 512 or even a gig. I'm gonna just put it at 512 for now since we're in a virtual machine and click next. And then we're going to create a new virtual hard disk instead of using an existing one because we do not have an existing hard disk. And then we'll click next. And then it's going to ask to create a hard disk size. Now it's asking for like a 60 some gig drive here. It's like, no, we do not need that much. We're just going to do a 10 gigabyte uh, virtual hard disk. Usually by the default, what VirtualBox does is 10 gigs. So we're going to do 10 gigs here. And then we're going to click next. And then it'll come with a completing the new virtual machine wizard here, kind of confirming everything. And then click finish and it will pop up here in the manager. And then what you want to do is right click on the machine and click start. And then this window will pop up here. And what you want to do is click the CD tab here and then click capture ISO image. And it's going to come up with a dialog box here. You're going to want to browse to where your uh, Windows XP professional ISO is saved. Mine is right here. So we're going to click that and open it up and then what the machine is going to do now is it is we're going to do a reset here and then once we reset the machine it's going to boot up here 512 megabytes of ram you see there and then after a little bit it should post us with the windows xp setup screen We'll take a little bit of time here. There it is. Set up as inspecting your computer's hardware configuration. And then it should pop up here with the Windows setup kind of blue screen here. There it is. And this will take a little bit of time to start loading some things and um, getting all the files necessary for this first part of the setup. So just kind of let this sit for a little bit. This is going to take some time. Uh, virtual PC isn't like VirtualBox or VMware or even Hyper-V, it's going to take its sweet time. Um, so kind of just let this sit. And um, it's going to load some files down here, it says. So I'll be back with you guys once we hit our first part of the setup. So here we are now at the first portion of the setup here, Windows XP Professional Setup. Um, it automatically skips to the hard drive part of this. And what we're going to do is, since this is the only unpartitioned space we have, we're just going to click Enter. It's going to ask uh, what file format to use. We're going to do NTFS file system quick, and then hit Enter on that. And it's going to go ahead and format that drive. And that will not take long. And then after it formats the drive, it will start copying the files over and getting everything ready. It's going to do a disk check first and then it's going to start copying the files over. So um, there you see here, setup is copying files. So this process can take some time. So I'm going to let this sit for a little bit again and I'll be back with you guys when we hit the restart point. So now the virtual machine here will reboot and you see here it's starting up 
And then what it's gonna do, it's gonna try and boot from the CD, but it's gonna say press any key. Um, you do not need to do that. Um, it will eventually boot from the hard drive and that's what you need to be doing, not booting from the CD and going in a constant loop. So you skip the process of pressing any key and here we go, it's going to bring up the Windows XP loading screen here. And then it will load up into the next part of the setup here. So it'll sit there for a little bit and then now it is going to pop up here with the GUI interface part of the setup. So here it is, and then it's gonna take a little bit for it to um, install some things, and then it's gonna prompt you with some screens to um, do some setups. So let this sit for a little bit longer for you guys, and I will be back once we hit those screens. All right, so we are at the first screen here. It's gonna ask for a name and organization, so we're just gonna type everything epan for the name and then next and it's going to ask for a computer name we're just going to call it windows xp and then you can leave the password screen blank now the mouse is going to be a little bit finicky so i'm going to have to use uh, the keyboard here try and uh, do this as best i can um, now it's going to ask for the date and time um, we're just going to go ahead and confirm with what we got now and then hit next so you may have to use your keyboard for this at first. Um, so, and now it's going to go through the process of installing the network here. And so, and then after that, another screen should pop up. That will either that or it will continue with the setup. So we'll just go ahead and continue with the uh, setup here. There's no other screens that pop up. So it's gonna go through the process of copying the files, which is gonna take some time. So just let it sit and do its thing. And I'll be back with you guys once we hit the next restart point. And a way to fix your mouse from moving all over the place so easily, um, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to go up to uh, input and then go to mouse integration and turn it off. So now you can see my mouse cursor is in my Windows 10 machine, but when I click in, now it works perfectly in my XP uh, virtual machine in here. And then to get out of the virtual PC, uh, you hit the right alt key and now you're back into the um, Windows 7 uh, machine and now I cannot go out of it. And then it's right control for VirtualBox to get out to your main machine. So a couple things there to help you out there. So um, once again, I'll be back with you guys once we hit the restart point. So it did take longer than expected and um, it will restart one more time and you'll get this display settings screen. You guys know the drill with Windows XP. You click OK. It's going to make your screen a little bit bigger. It's going to say that it adjusted your screen resolution. Go ahead and click OK. And here it is with the Windows XP screen and it's going to come up with the uh, some more setup windows. and. Just after it sits here for a little bit, sits here for a little bit, and then it will uh, come up here with the screen. I'm not sure if there's any audio drivers or anything installed with this, um, but we will uh, check that out here um, because you can install the um, the virtual machine additions right here um, when this is all finished setting up. So. Uh, this will take a little bit. It took longer than expected to do the copying files in, uh, in the GUI interface part of it. So this part may take longer than expected as well. So we're going to let this sit here. I'll pause and I'll be back when we go ahead and hit the next setup screen. So here pretty soon it should be prompting up that setup screen. Um, We're gonna go ahead and uh, let it sit here for a little bit because it should be coming up um, when that screen goes black. I know it gives me the uh, good old hourglass uh, icon here, um, but it should be coming up fairly quickly here, I would hope. And there you see, um, it's gonna be a little bit, uh, a little bit buggy, but um, that is quite all right. And um, 
It's gonna try and load up this next, here we go. Here's the setup window we're looking for. So it is gonna be very, very buggy. So um, this may help if you dedicate a little bit more RAM or something like that to it. So it's gonna say, welcome to Microsoft Windows. You know, thank you for purchasing Microsoft Windows XP. So we're gonna go ahead and click uh, next to continue. And then the next screen will pop up saying help protect your PC. You can do uh, automatic updates or not now. Uh, you can pick either one, really doesn't matter. And click next. And then the next screen that will pop up here uh, as it's taking a little bit of time. It's kind of acting like more what it would in real life, honestly, when you're setting this up on a real PC, um, virtual PC. Uh, is treating it like that right now basically so um, it's doing its thinking here and then it will uh, come up to the next screen which I believe should be the user account page setting up your user account uh, let's get check for internet connectivity first but it probably will come up as a either an error or it's gonna ask uh, if you want to connect through a local area network or directly to the internet uh, we'll leave it at local area network and click next you can skip it if you'd like as well. Uh, no, we will not register with Microsoft and click next. And now we're at the user account screen. So you can type in anything you want here. I'll just type EPAN for example for the username and click next. And then it should come up here with the finish screen that says thank you and that your computer is ready to go. So we're going to go ahead and click finish and you see there is no uh, audio drivers installed. You cannot hear any uh, audio in this. So um, they could help if you install the virtual machine additions um, and it may help with the screen resolution as well. So it's not a square resolution. You'll have more of a rectangle and filling up the entire screen if you were to have this installed. So um, it's taking its time here trying to think for the first time, log in any of that good stuff. So um, it's gonna come up with the logon screen and then um, it should pop up to the desktop. So um, as you can see, it's doing a lot of thinking. So we're on the welcome screen and then um, it'll kind of think a little bit and then it should eventually bring us to the desktop of Windows XP with the good old bliss background and all that stuff. So um, I probably should have, like I said, probably should have dedicated a little bit more memory to it. 512 might have been a little too low for this. I probably could have done a gig. Probably would have worked a little bit better than this. Maybe it would have went a little bit faster. So you can tell what the specs of computers was like back in the day. Um, where it ran a lot slower and set up a lot slower because of the specs and now it would run super quick so now it's uh, doing some finalizing here and there you see the bliss background the infamous the famous bliss background for windows xp so a couple final things it's doing here and then uh, the taskbar should pop up after this is all said and done and then we can go ahead and install the uh, virtual machine um, additions here. I believe that's what's called. Uh, yeah, virtual machine additions. So um, it'll ask for installation or updating it. We haven't even up or installed it yet, so we're gonna have to install it. So I'm gonna pause and let this think a little bit more. Um, let it do its thing, and I will come back with you guys to install the uh, guest additions. Actually, never mind. So we're here at the desktop. And uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click install or update guest editions. And it's going to say that it's going to uh, eject your current CD-ROM. Um, and we're going to click continue on this window. So it's going to eject the setup file and it's going to insert the virtual machine editions uh, ISO. And um, sometimes it may start automatically. Sometimes you may have to go in to the drive and manually open it. So there you see it says VM edition. So it's actually doing it by itself right here. So we did not even need this. Um, so 
it looks like there is um, some audio drivers right here. Um, there's a volume thing that's up here, but we're not seeming to hear any audio. So here is the setup for Virtual Machine Editions. We're going to go ahead and go through that. Click Next to um, install, and that's all there is to it. It's going to go ahead and just install everything on its own, and it may require a reboot. Usually these types of things do, like for VirtualBox Guest Editions or for VMware Tools, it requires a reboot. So we'll let this sit for a little bit and uh, I'll come back to you guys either if, when it's done or if we have to reboot after this is all finished. So now for a little bit, say setup completed. And then uh, here on this screen, we're just gonna go ahead and click uh, finish. And then uh, we'll pop up with a window here to ask you to reboot your system. So we're gonna click yes. And it's going to reboot the XP machine here which will probably take longer than normal because um, A, not as much RAM dedicated for mine, and B, it's inside of a virtual machine as well too. So I'm um, going to go through the process here of rebooting, and I'll come back with you guys once uh, it's uh, booting back up or not. Never mind again. <laughs> it's kind of playing games with me right now. So rebooting here. As you see, 512 megabytes of RAM was probably a little bit too low. Probably should have put in a little bit more than 512 megabytes. So, um, looks like it ejected that uh, disk or ISO um, automatically. Didn't even have to do that. Maybe it's still inserted. I am not sure. But it automatically removed the other one. So, I'll let this sit here a little bit and think. And I'll be back with you guys once. Um, once we start hitting the boot up portion of this. So here we are back at the desktop after the reboot here. And uh, this is now with the uh, virtual machine additions installed. Um, no audio still. Um, thought maybe that would have fixed that issue, but, um, and I don't think I'm hearing any audio come from, I'm actually not even hearing any audio come from the machine, but, there you go guys that is it it is all installed ready to go for you so um, there you go that is the video tutorial on how to install windows xp professional in virtual pc thank you guys for watching this video tutorial if you enjoyed and if it helped you out leave a like down below if you're not yet subscribed be sure to do so and uh, turn the bell on for notifications whenever i upload a new video and comment below with new video ideas for me once again, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.